Alright, it's been a while, so I'm going to give you guys kind of a treat. These are Hilaria Brevicornis. Um, I pretty much never dig these guys up. They are 100% fossorial in my experience. Um, they lay deep burrows and chambers, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but I'm adding some more resources into their bin. I'm um, just kind of giving them a, you know, a refresh. I've had this culture for about two years. Um, I haven't done, like, full substrate changes, but I have just added stuff in as needed, um, whether it be compost or rotting wood or leaves. So I'll get into that. Um, first thing I added was, uh, so we have some, uh, just some regular oak, and then I also added live oak. There's also alder and elm in here. So just like a good variety of stuff you would find um, in their natural habitat over in Europe. These are from um, Croatia, by the way. Um, rotting wood. And a lot of people, uh, they ask me what I mean when I describe rotting wood in like a care sheet or when I'm giving somebody advice. Like, this is rotting wood. It's so soft, it breaks with your hands. Easy. Like, no effort at all. Almost like cardboard. You know, so it's been rotting and fermenting, and this is the stuff that's readily accessible. So the stuff they don't have to work too hard to get at, and that's what you want. Uh, that goes for like millipedes and pale millipedes, like glomerus and ropolomerus. They need this kind of stuff. Like the hard bark and stuff is good for like hides and whatnot, and they will you know nibble at here and there as it breaks down. But this is the readily available wood that is so necessary for species like this. Um, the next thing is uh, calcium carbonate, this stuff right here, um, in the form of limestone. Uh, you can use calcium car carbonate in other forms, um, but you can tell it's calcium carbonate because it uh, breaks apart very easily, like I had just broken this piece of, like a minute before I started doing this by accident. Um, and if you pour some vinegar or some kind of acid on it, it'll bubble up because it's mostly calcium carbonate. Um, so what I've done is, uh, before the video, just because it's kind of a pain in the ass, I broke apart a piece and sprinkled it all in here. So there's lots of little, you know, pieces, maybe like a centimeter or so um, in here along with the rotting wood pieces I've already uh, kind of chopped up. So I'm going to kind of... I'll leave some bigger chunks in here um, for them to kind of break down as needed, um, but largely it's going to be crumbled up. And yeah, we'll leave that. Okay. Um, I do have some pieces of wood and stone that go on top of here as hides for them, um, but I, I, I took them out for now, I'll put them back maybe after the video. Um, but the care on these guys, so they're fossorial, um, they have about six inches of dirt they can burrow down into, um, well when I say dirt it's a lot more complicated than that, it's um, organic compost, um, vegetable based compost that I make, there's also some decaying forest products in here. Um, flake soil, um, leaf flake, and flake soil and leaf flake is basically a more broken down version of this stuff right here. Um, lots of rotting leaves, humus, and then the limestone. So the reason why the substrate is so important to these, these are fossorial, and they burrow down, and this species is unique in that they only breed once in their lifetime, that's it. Um, after that, they I think they live for a little while, but they just don't produce any more young, and then they die. Um, and broods are typically small, like uh, like under 10 is pretty common, you know, for a brood for these guys. Um, so it's very slow going. I started out with 10 two years ago, and um, then like most of them died. I think I had three left, and then those three had young, I think maybe like... If I averaged it out, they probably each had five young, um, or maybe that's just what made it. And uh, 
so it's pretty stable now and I just recently got some more um, from another source to you know kind of pad their numbers a little bit so they're doing okay um, there's like maybe 25 or 30 of them in here maybe a little more than that um, they do live a long time uh, I, I'm hearing like three four years to maturity and so far that's pretty consistent with what I've seen because um, I got mine when they were already kind of decent sized at least my first group and to a lesser degree my second group so they do take a while and also they are they have one mate so the males g will make burrows or the females will make burrows and the males will stand guard at those burrows it's, uh, so they have very unique behavior and because they take so long to mature and the reproduction numbers are low I, uh, they're kind of comparable to like um, if you're into roaches the, the rhino roach they're kind of like rhino roaches in that way they kind of live the same kind of life and uh, Hilary Brevicornis is also famous for being the largest uh, pill bug that can roll up into a ball on land that we know of at least that's kept in the hobby I think the only thing that comes close is like Armadillo, you know, some of those guys get pretty sizable, but not quite like Brevicornis. Um, for the substrate moisture, you want to keep it relatively moist. Um, these guys don't typically dry out, they get a, a good bit of rain where they're from. So I'll dig them up and then I'll get the macro lens out and I'll let you have a look. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be mixing in and incorporating all this new stuff into the soil. And then after that, I'll put some more on top. So this is Brevicornis in all its glory. Um, they look a lot different than, say, an Armadillidium, even though they're the same in that they both roll into balls. But the shape the general shape that they have is different so I don't like to disturb these guys too much but I'm going to uh, oh maybe he'll straighten out on his own um, but they have a beautiful pattern I'll try and keep there may be this So you can see the front of their face, um, they're very like slumped over and kind of round. I guess that even, it kind of just makes it uh, easier for them to be up into a ball. Um, they're not the quickest isopods, um, but one of the key features of them is that back portion. So on Armadillidium, and Kubaris and all that they have a bunch of plates back there but these guys have just one big single back plate and uh, this this one is quite large um, this is a young one believe it or not but it's bigger than uh, pretty much any armadillidium as an adult right now but as you can see it's already trying to burrow down Come out, little guy. I guess I'll show you them kind of rolled up. That's how they roll up. He's got a little bit of dirt in there, so it's made it more difficult, but you get a closer up. <laughs> That's their underbelly. You guys are getting real in depth here. Those are their gills right there. They have two sets on either side of four. There's a mite that just rolled by. But yeah, um, so these guys, as I was explaining earlier, so um, from right here, it is possible for a male to fertilize multiple females, but generally they pair up and they mate for the rest of their lives. They have that one brood, and that's pretty much it for them. Um, take a very very long time to gestate and reach maturity which is why they're so rare in the hobby sorry our battery died so I'll continue letting you get a good look at this guy 
I don't want to dig up any more because, you know, there could be females, you know, brooding. And I know this one isn't because it's still too small. Still bigger than most armadillidium, but still small. At least for their size. Yeah, I think I've covered most of the basics, at least with these. Um, just keep in mind to give them plenty of ventilation and try not to uh, let their soil dry out or get too moist for that matter, too. A little springtail. And, uh, yeah, obviously this one isn't gravid because, like all of them, they store their eggs on their underside. And this one most certainly does not have any eggs. No eggs. Oh well. We'll get eggs out of them soon. At least the older ones in the tub. Yeah, their color is really, really nice in like a very natural kind of way. Um, and no two of them are like, they all have different patterns, different shades. Um, some of them are shinier, some of them are more matte color. I don't know, that could have to do with being in between molts though, I'm not sure. But yeah, tanks. These guys are absolute tanks. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, obviously, since you know my culture is relatively small, I'm not selling any. I might let a little bit of the next generation go. Um, but not quite yet with these guys. The, the turnaround is just so long and the payoff so low. Um... So yeah, so the channel is actually uh, close to a thousand subscribers, and I would really appreciate it if you guys would like and subscribe and tell your friends a little bit, because um, we have a lot of care videos that just aren't out there, um, and I think this channel provides a really nice free resource for people to learn about isopods and roaches and all kinds of other stuff. Um, what well, with the unfortunate circumstances in the world right now, I'm going to have time to make more videos. So I'm probably going to make a few more in the next couple of days. Um, probably one or two on roaches, and then maybe another one on isopods again. Um, but, yeah. They're very cool little pods. Just make sure to give them a very, very rich substrate with all of the stuff that I mentioned earlier. Um, ventilation, make sure to give them a good amount because they are underground and you don't want the soil going bacterial. Um, I even recommend very carefully poking some holes into the soil every now and again. And when you're first making your soil, really mix it up and get a lot of air in there along with like larger objects. That'll keep the soil from going bacterial and getting all nasty. Um, most of my events, my speaking events, and my reptile shows have been either postponed or cancelled because, once again, current circumstances. Um, but I will let you guys know what's up with that. Um, we're not really selling all that much during this time either, just because going to FedEx and the post office is kind of sketch. Um, they're real weird about people coming in, and it's kind of a hassle along with, you know, the actual you know, risk of going. But, um, yeah, I will keep you guys posted and, you know, everybody stay healthy and uh, watch my videos and tell your friends while you're at home quarantining. So have a good night.